Hello, my name is Adam Murray and welcome to Extra Time. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as it really helps us out. Today we're joined by Walter Tarden star Neil Montgomery. Welcome to the show, Neil. Hi, Adam. Uh, thanks for having me on today. What you're doing here is really a great initiative and the best look for everything in the future. Thanks. Uh, so when would you have first started playing for Abbeyside? Um, for Abbeyside, I suppose, back seven or eight years old, let's say, back in the uh, in the fryer, in the indoor hall in the fryer with Larry Cliff, I think. About 30 of us running around the hall with rubber hurleys. But that's probably my first introduction um, with Abbeyside. Then on with the primary school and then gradually underage uh, with the club. Would you have been on much development squads going up through the ages? No, I actually, I don't think I was on any until minor, I think. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Yeah, probably. I wasn't good enough back then, to be honest. But no, I wasn't on any of the 24 or 20 Welches. Um, the first award for the team I made was minor. So look, so it all worked out okay in the end, but no to answer. And uh, would you have had any success on your underage teams with like Abbeyside or Pet Minor team? Right? Um, oh yeah, we would have had strong enough team underage. Uh, definitely the year below us, I think they won nearly every county final. So when they joined us um, as the year below, like we had a very strong team. But I know from a personal point of view, I'd say I was on the B team at Abbeyside up until under 14 or 15. Um, then yeah, made my way onto the first team up for my age, but uh, no, we weren't really. Dallas Allen is more of the strong ages back when we were underage. Uh, we were in Division Two the year out of my age. Um, participated in a few county finals in that, but no real success until under twenty one was our first real big win. Uh, we won the under twenty one A against Dallas Allen, but underage was probably hit and miss. We were kind of in no man's land in a way. The year below us were very strong. The year below us were strong at Division 2, but our age were kind of hit and miss. Uh, what was it like playing with school? Um, very enjoyable because you have such a, a wide range of clubs involved. I, I suppose you could be playing with your best friends from school. They might not necessarily be the same club as you. So there's, a, there's that extra bond and a bit of, a bit of crack as well. Um, I suppose we weren't overly successful in school either until sixth year. I think we only had one one thing uh, in first or second year. Didn't win a thing then until sixth year. Um, and then we had a great year in sixth year, to be fair. Jeez, it was uh, fantastic for everyone involved, and especially with the Leaving Cert as well. It got us through the year. And uh, you were playing on a fairly star studded UCC team when the one of its given. Uh, how did you find the standard of playing that? Yeah, Jesus, it was uh, at the beginning, it was certainly very intimidating. I, I was, the first few sessions, I remember looking around and there was about six or seven all stars there. Like, and then even, I think, last year, I was kind of in and out of the team, but on the bench alone, we had like six inter-county seniors. Like, so it was a serious shock to the system at the beginning. Even the coaches involved... A lot of them are involved in inter-county setups, and you see, you're used to seeing them on TV and everything, and then you're you're there in the field with everyone. So it's a bit overwhelming at the beginning, but uh, actually, look, once you get playing with them and have the crack with each other, you just realise they're like they're just like yourself. So it took a bit of getting used to our lives, but uh, uh, not a great great team to be involved in. I certainly learned uh, an awful lot from my time here. And Neil, um, I suppose you know, you kind of mentioned there about the fact that you like when you were younger, you weren't like you weren't an automatic, basically superstar from the start. Like if for young lads, especially like I suppose you'd be very good friends with Conor Prunty, and he would have been on the most of the age groups all the way through. And like you mentioned, playing in school, and I've no doubt you probably would have played with say six or seven lads who are probably on minor squads or under sixteen squads all the way through. And that can go one of two ways. You can go, I'm not as good as them, I'm just going to give up. Or the other way, which obviously happened for you, I can work harder, make the progression. And, you know, um, you can talk to us a bit about that progression, getting from where you, where you were to where you wanted to be. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was, geez, it was very tough, like, at the start. I won't lie, like, there was a lot of times I would have been very upset and felt hard on by it, which for luck, to no point feeling fired for itself, really. Um, 
I suppose at the very beginning, at 14, 15, rugby was my number one sport. Once I think everyone kind of knows that I didn't have much time for GA. And if I did, it was Gaelic before hurling. But the one thing with rugby, I suppose, being in, I was lucky enough to be in some of the development squads there, probably taught me, kind of introduced me to diets and gym work and stuff like that, which was, I suppose I wasn't getting it through the GA development, but I was getting it through the rugby from a start. So I kind of had a, a leg up in that regard, in, in that, that kind of professionalism to that kind of environment. But then uh, coming up through the ages and looking at the lads, look, at that age, I wouldn't be getting too down if you're not on development squads. I know at the time it's a massive thing, um, but really it doesn't really matter. Like, yeah. I'm sure the crack and everything is a lot more important. Um, and when you're out in the field, you could have a good day one day and a fellow who's very well known and is on all these development squads, like, there mightn't be much in it at the end of the day. So you just have to keep keep the head down and working away. Look, it was, it was never a thing that I kind of was dying to make any development squad. It was more for the enjoyment kind of thing. Um, I just love playing it. And I suppose I never really saw it as work, even though when I look back now, there was a load of hours put in. It was never work. Like, it was just a bit of practice for friends. And then luckily I got a break um, coming up through the ages, like, and I just kind of all kind of, gathered momentum from there and like I said I was lucky and I know fellas who were with me under 14 under 15 under 16 superstars on all the teams um, and they're not playing anymore like you know so I suppose it's not a sprint it's a marriage. Um, You had a good year with the league and with Covid obviously all that got stopped so how did that when you had to train in lockdown yourself and keep fit? Uh, yeah, it was, it was very strange now. It all was grinding to a halt um, because it all came so fast as well. I suppose I wasn't on the in lean plans initially at the start of the year. Um, came in for a couple of trials and then only kind of came in fully in late November, December. So it was all came at me really, really fast. And then when lockdown came, it was all ground to a halt. Um, so it was this, bit funny in that regard but look I was lucky in terms of front TV being on with me um, I was able to go out to the field do my running with him doing a bit of poking with him but uh, that was I suppose at least having someone there that really really helped but um, yeah it was, it was a very strange one I must say and um, what was it like kind of coming into the pan at first was it kind of intimidating or could you enjoy it or yeah yeah, it was, no, it was it was certainly intimidating. Really, really enjoyable. Um, I suppose one of those things like you could get caught up and looking at fellas, um, poking around at you and being like, "Geez, I remember his goal two years ago, or this fellas' point." Or I suppose no time for that really. You just have to get stuck in. I remember going initially and just running as hard as I could or hitting everything that moved. Like probably my hurting was <laughs> took a back step. I just wanted to run around and work as hard as I could. Like. Um, just throw yourself into it and hopefully you'll sink or swim. But no, it's great, a great experience. Like and even if it didn't go my way, like last year I got called in with uh, Fanning for a game and it was a horrible experience. Like I remember I was on Noel and Noel destroyed me. But uh look, they're all learning curves, like you'll always get your chance. So, like for a first year in the panel, even the learned experience for you must have been huge considering the fact that you kinda you had a very good league and then all of a sudden no one knew when championship was going on and then the club championship came and you got injured and then you were you hurt your hamstring and you came back so like you were kind of you were chasing again when you, you like so your momentum kept on being broken every time you were getting somewhere yeah exactly yeah but your luck is you can look back and say that it was unlucky but at the same time not many people go from their very first year into the panel to playing and actually getting a bit of game time straight up to the final like so look at it was probably unfortunate in some circumstances, but at the same time, uh, I wouldn't look back and say it was a bad year. Like it was a, it was a good year. Um, I was very lucky, and not many people get to do, do it in in all in one year. But yeah, certainly, who would have known that would have happened if the momentum wasn't uh, broken? Which sure. hindsight's twenty twenty, as they say. Did your mindset change much when you found out that you would be starting for the All Ireland? Not really, to be honest. Um, look, it's, it's 
cliche enough at the moment, but the, the lads coming on aren't exactly subs. Like it's not they're by no means a a worse player than the person starting. Like they are finished. So sometimes you could come on and a sub could have a bit an even bigger impact than the person who started. Um and it could even be easier coming on as a sub if fellas are a bit tired and you're coming on fresh out for twenty, twenty five minutes. That's the same at the end of the day, like you're still going to have to work as hard as you can chase down the fellas, kind of put in your tackles and stuff. doesn't matter if you're starting or if you're coming on. So The game still has to be played the same, no matter no matter what time of the, the match you're coming on at or if you're starting. And like you would have been coming on on late in the game. That could have suited you. You're kind of gracious. So. What was it? Yeah. So it was a kind of day that obviously there's nerves as well coming in trying to get up to the pace of the game. And my first, the first time I came on against Gork, I just went around like a headless chicken trying to hit everything that moved. Or I remember I picked up a roll if the ball or something. I got the ball and was running out of attack and I threw the ball. Like, you know, it was just completely wasn't up to the, the pace of the game whatsoever. So there is that side of it as well. But if you can get in up to speed with things and find your rhythm, like you're, I suppose naturally enough you would have a bit more in the tank than the other lads it could be a bit more lucrative for you so you saw like their lines coming on the impact he had as well this year it's phenomenal so I suppose yeah it is uh, it's not necessarily easier but you can get the breaks as well or would you ever have been like intimidated by any of your markers like that you come up against this year um so it was not really because the way the game has gone, you're never really assigned to one player. Well, unless you are actually assigned to one player, you'll be on that fella for the whole game. But especially in the forwards, like it's not like I'm meant to be marking the back or anything like that. We're always rotating up there, like so. You might necessarily, might you might be fearing a fella or saying like you know he might be strong in one aspect of the game, but doesn't, you're not going to be on him for seventy minutes. And I suppose it's up to you then to try and. Uh, work to your strength and not his strength but yeah certainly there are there are players of course that you come on and you're like Jesus he's a, he's a serious player like you know but uh, if you get caught up in that like you're, nothing's going to go your way so you just try not to think of those things think on, on, of yourself and um, work on what you're good at and the team basically and um, uh, can I just ask you it was a very, I remember I was watching one of the games. I think it was, I could, it could have been the Munster final, and you came on and a ball broke out to the side and you got onto it first. And I just remember thinking, like, you know, the difference between club and inter county level, where you had, you know, you'd often play against really big guys at club level, but they don't have free to foot. But I just remember yeah. watching three Limerick lads chasing you down, and they're, they're all about six foot three and they can all move like trains. Like, is that the main difference between club and county? That you probably get that extra second or two a club, but that I suppose you mentioned there, every guy is quick, he's big, he's strong. Like, the, the standard is is phenomenal compared to, let's say, even senior club in Walford. Yeah, it is definitely. There's, you don't have time to think like you're always playing on the edge. Like it's, I think, like Mike Miss Stephen said, uh, when you're you're playing at your best and you're not even thinking about what you're doing it's happened so fast just kind of off instinct or whatever like uh, at Intercount you don't really have time to think you just you just do what you can you see something you go straight about it and and try to run on and do something get on to the end of it again or the club yeah definitely brings you like if you might have a bit of time you could even drop the ball go back and pick it up and try to get past fellas it's certainly uh, you don't go past those Limerick lads as easy as you might go past some fellas in club and uh, obviously you're starting in the other and final this year. Is there anything you would learn from that experience? Uh, definitely, yeah. Probably some stuff, some stuff I'll keep to myself, but other stuff, yeah. Like uh, the uh, the event itself is obviously, I suppose the a crowd not being there probably helped in one way, especially being my first year and not having, not being used to the whole build up or anything like that. Like having no crowd there is probably... The, uh, the event itself didn't, wasn't as, as big an occasion as it might have been on other years. But, um, yeah, I was surprised. Like, I would have been more nervous for other games and stuff um, coming into it. I kind of, I thought I was fairly chilled and relaxed going in. Um, obviously, the performance itself was a bit different, but 
yeah, there was. It was just out of the learning curve, to be honest. There are there are things I learned, but um, just have to more so just go back to myself, work on things myself. Nothing really major. Like it was more of a team, a team fault than a, anything else. And do you look at like do you look at like lads? I suppose you mentioned it's your first year panel. You are right. There's very few guys come onto the panel straight away and get game time. But in the last couple of years, we've seen say like you know Caleb came in, did a good job, and this this year like he's an All Star nominee. Um, like it even took like Stephen Bennett's up for Player of the Year this year, and like it definitely took him two three years to establish himself you know, on the team and on the panel. So, like, uh, like you set your goals and, of course, you want to make the team, but, like, is, is the case just a small progressions now for the new season ahead? Uh, definitely, yeah. I think last season was a bit unique in, in every way. Um, certainly this year, there's, I know it is a, the COVID is still with us, but there is a bit more structure and you kind of, you can get your house in order a bit earlier. Um, I think, like, it's, everyone's back at the very beginning, like, if not, with a few lads who've come into the panel this year, like it could be even further back to the panel. So it's just everybody's on the starting block again and it's up to you to try and get your place in the team. But yeah, as a, from an individual point of view, there are certain aspects that you'd be looking at, whether it's getting a bit stronger physically or getting a bit faster um, or improving your hurling or certain aspects of your game. It's definitely just getting all those little things incrementally better. And uh, hopefully in three or four years, like you said, yeah, It'll all come to fruition. Um, what would your pre-season be like now and how is it all going since the lockdown is right now and you can't really uh, yeah. anyone? There's typically the pre-season to be in the gym um, building yourself up, getting stronger and trying to work on injury prevention. Um, obviously that's a bit different at the moment because there's not many places open. But um, yeah, I just moved back up to my college house in Cork there a couple of weeks ago. And there's a few of us in the house who are all um, involved with various teams, so we have a bit of a gym set up downstairs, which is okay. Like we can we can get our gym work in, our, our work into for, as injury prevention. But in terms of like slogging it out in the field, yeah, as well. But uh, no, we still have to do our our fitness and all that work on, off our own back. With, is, uh, which isn't and uh, is there anything you can think you could do to kind of establish yourself on the team over the coming year um, work work as hard as you can whatever the lads tell you just take it on board and try and work on it um, they know what they're talking about clearly like so you just have to don't be getting carried away with anything if you play a bad game you don't need to be too hard on yourself and if you play a good game you definitely don't need to be getting carried away with playing a good performance like so just listen to the lads take on board what they're saying and go at it give it your best shot have you got any ambitions for the coming season um personally yeah i suppose trying try and nail down a start on the team and um, that's, that's probably everyone's ambition like um hopefully injuries is We'll stay away and I'll get a good run in it. Um, and then obviously last year, when you look back, we got to two finals. We lost two finals. So this year, the the ideal scenario would be to win one of those finals. Obviously get there, but certainly to to get some silverware. I'd like to thank Neil for joining us today. Uh, we wish you all in the panel uh, a very, very best look for 2021. Uh, can I ask you again to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel? And we'll have more big guests to come over next week. So keep an eye out on social media. And we'll see you soon on Extra Time.